Hello everybody, welcome back to the Outward Reddit of the uh, of the internet here. I, I like doing this series because it's really just sort of laid back and I get to highlight the community and find some new stuff that I actually didn't really know. So let's go ahead and dig right in. Let's uh, let's see here, screenshot slash art, l let me take a peek here, l let me judge this shit. I'm so glad I got back into this game, I swear either the lighting engine or just good design leads to, yeah, I mean, really? I gotta be honest, it it's really good. I had um, a clip from when I was doing my uh, series on like how to get, get geared or whatever early on and I did that extremely long walk. Th there was a point where I was walking back to Sierzo and the lighting just was so nice. It was coming through the wood and it, it just looked fantastic. It, it, it's a really good looking game surprisingly for like 12 developers at the time whenever they designed the base game. It was really clean. Oh, this is the method that people were telling me about in the uh, in the money making method. The the new one that I posted is that you can sell your horror chitin or not horror chitin. You can um I think sell horror weapons. I didn't actually know that they sell for a good bit in Levant. Like I was completely unaware of that. Like look at look at that shit. Hold on a minute. What nine hundred? Oh my god, that's worth so much silver. What the fuck? I did not know that they were worth that much. This guy already beat the DLC. Why, why even nerf the... <laughs> why nerf this? I, I mean, not, not this, but the alchemy method. Like, th this is so much better. And it's way easier because you can just go to the Cabal of Wind Temple in Enmercar Forest and straight up just kill everything, either with melee or just lead him into the big room and then just kill them all right there. It, it's super simple. Th th this is the easiest money-making method that I was unaware of until I got that comment. But yeah, th this is by far a better money-making method than what I post. I, I might do a video on it just so that way more people get traction, but I'm not sure. I, I don't even know who to credit. Like, I, I just, so many people have told me this, so I'm just gonna show it, but I I'm glad that this was told to me because I was literally just running the monsoon strat over and over and over until I had a buttload of money, but this is so much easier. What the fuck? So he put 30 traps down against the light mender. Uh, I'm assuming it worked. Yeah, that's about right. To be fair, I'm not surprised that this works because I've killed the royal mana core with about 35 to 40 ish. I think I put down about 45 traps once and not all of them popped, but he died within about 25 to 30. So I guess this is about right. <laughs> Yeah, I think if, if, I don't know if these are regular spikes or if there's iron or palladium, but if you have palladium, it probably will just decimate them immediately. So I'm not surprised that this works. Traps are fucking broken and nobody, it, n nobody knows that. Like there, I see so many people doing these crazy builds. It's like, bro, I can beat the whole game with traps. And, and, and that's a fact. And no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I've, I've already thought about it and I don't want to do that. Bro, what is this video? What's happening? What the fuck? Oh, there's a oh they're like t posing cyberpunk cyberpunk see outward did it first before it was cool <laughs> what the hell oh my god why are they all t posing what i've never seen that i've i've never seen this happen this is like some children of the corn shit what the <laughs> it's so goofy it is kind of creepy though help with the final boss of the three brothers oh that one's easy anyone figure out how to beat the crimson avatar he's so fucking hard is is, is that the dude it, it, crimson avatar hold, hold on let, let me just google real quick because I, I can't remember his name okay yeah it, it, it is that boss yeah this dude's actually incredibly easy i just beat him with a frost pistol and a frost sword and that's it i just kept shooting him over and over and over again and then yeah i just beat him down he he doesn't really have any crazy moves you just gotta watch the fireballs that's about it he throws down this giant nuke fireball thing it moves at the speed of mayonnaise so just like dodge it it's pretty easy like there's there, there's really not a, 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 a anything crazy about this boss it, it's it's pretty easy I highly recommend using a uh, frost weapon or something because it, it really felt like it worked. I'm not sure if he's weak to fire. I mean, he's called the Crimson Avatar and uses fire, so maybe. Somebody go help my mans here. Everybody get on the Reddit and tell this guy how you beat the Crimson Avatar if you have. It, it, it's, it's pretty easy for me, but I, I've been playing the game forever, but m maybe he needs a little bit of help. So I recommend if you're not good at melee, use a bow or use a gun. I think that'll make it a lot easier because he's relatively slow. He has one jump in and that's kind of it. Oh, here we go. We have a discussion, boys. So 
So now you make a loss from crafting potions. I agree that the amount of money you could amass early on from buying alchemy ingredients and selling the three times basic crafting potions back was a little excessive. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <laughs> you know why it's not? Because you can still make double, triple, five times that amount of money from doing anything else. I have always stated that playing the game is more profitable than the alchemy strat. The only reason to do the alchemy strat early on is because you don't have access to a lot of the areas, but I've shown time and time again that you can go to the Cabal of Wind Temple with basic armor and beat the shit out of everything there. I've done it in so many videos. It is not complicated by any degree. And even now, there was a guy I saw, he, he went to the Cabal of Wind Temple naked and killed everything there because all you have to do is lure them into the big room and then they all die. So, I mean, it's a broken thing that is way worse than the alchemy method. Literally nerfing this did nothing. So, I, I can probably understand your frustration, but um, I feel like if you invest the time and the initial cost into buying the ingredients and crafting the potions, you should at least be able to see a meager return. And that you, you used to be able to, but it, it's fine. I mean, at this point, I'm pretty sure it's more profitable to sell the raw ingredients than to craft them into potions. Don't, don't even do that. Just go... Just go kill something. You'll make more money doing that. Yep, they nerfed it into the ground because it goes against how you're meant to play outward. Okay, so you see, this is already wrong. The, 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 the immediate thing about this statement here is it goes against how you're meant to play outward. False. The way you play outward is how you want. They allow you immense freedom. You can go anywhere you want in the game at any point in time if you want to go to monsoon from the start of the game you can do that if you can get the rations as well as travel there yourself and know the way the game gives you an incredible amount of freedom and that's what outward was built on and why it has a huge fan base is because it is incredibly free you have no quest constraints until you decide that you're ready to get those constraints until then you could never do an, any quest at all I I've done many playthroughs where I clear every single dungeon before I even touch the quest line. So this is a, is a false statement. There is no how you're meant to play outward. Plus, it's not a competitive game anyway, nor is it mass online either. Like, yeah, you can play cooperatively, but it's not a massive multiplayer situation. So nerfing this does nothing. For a single player game, this was a useless nerf and I, I, I find it stupid. It is what it is like it doesn't matter whether they did or didn't nerf it it's just dumb because it's a single player game essentially uh, outside of the co-op that does happen from time to time there's no benefit to nerfing something that minute so i mean in my opinion it, it th there is no it goes against how you how you play outward I, I don't believe that at all because outward's a free ass game and you have an immense amount of freedom so I don't believe that at all. Has there been any kind of tweak or update to the combat? I love this game, but dropped it due to the combat. I I gotta be honest, I can understand the frustration with the combat, but I, I feel like you need to find your build that allows you to play the way you want. So if you want to do like kind of crazy fast gameplay, right? You can do the speedster build and do a lot of cool shit with that where you have like spinning kicks and you can do like spin sword thrust and all sorts of crazy stuff. It, it, it's really cool. And then if you like the mage play style, I think runic mage is probably the most traditional, but you have the sigil, you know, mode that I did a while back. That's a really cool one. It does a lot of damage. It's incredibly fun and goofy. It's a really good build. So I feel if combat is your biggest problem, I think you need to experiment more with the game because there's a lot more weapons now and options for you to have a better experience from the combat perspective. Three brothers unidentified resource farming need help. I am trying to get the proper resource to build my last special building for the main quest and I, and I just am having no luck getting the rare material. Has anyone found a consistent way to farm the rare materials? I am running from dungeon to dungeon with little luck. This is a problem I ran into, and honestly, I don't have an answer just because I got lucky and it was just randomly in just in all these areas. There's a couple special buildings you have to build, right, for the quest, and they take rare ass materials like a, a diamond dust or some other weird crap. It, it, that's probably the worst part about the DLC is the obscurity of the items and th that there's no guides out there right now. As I mentioned, the wiki is sort of dry. It's getting there, but obviously, you know, it, it takes time. But anyway, point being is that there's not really a whole lot going on in that department. 
So this guy seems to have it actually under control here. I have my own farming route that seems to be pretty well. But keep in mind that unidentified nodes spawn with different locations and types every week. So it is a random spawn. I did not know it was random. And Scarlet Emissaries have low drop rates, so this isn't 100% efficient. Starting from New Shirako, the Grotto of Chalcedoni, unidentified node. Okay, that's good. Possible node location, first room after the entrance, heading south toward the river. A red one identified node okay so i mean this is actually pretty helpful i i genuinely think this is one of the better posts here that actually helps because i was having this issue as well for the unidentified nodes oh here we go this is an interesting one was anyone else just like what the fuck leaving the first city in zone swamp is a rough place and monsoon is just a big and bright is just big and bright oh that's that's funny okay i got it Makes me miss my gentle plains and mountains and the port city. Loving this game, though. Uh, overwhelmed? I think when the first time I played it, I wasn't overwhelmed. However, when I went to when I went to the Hollowed Marsh, that was when I realized I fucked up because that place is really tough. A lot of the enemies there will absolutely decimate you. I think Enmercar is the easiest to be. Uh, Hollowed Marsh being the absolute worst. Levant is sort of just empty. There's not really a whole lot. I mean, it's a desert, of course, but uh, I think just Hollowed Marsh is very deadly because you got the Tuana Sores, you got the weird pack of upgraded hyenas, essentially. You have random light sentinels just walking around that do a lot of damage. Not to mention you have the Jade Monkeys that if you're not used to the to, to the combat yet, they'll they'll decimate you. They have some pretty pretty good moves. Plus, there's like two of the hardest bosses in that area. So yeah, I mean, overall, the Hollowed Marsh is is a place that you want to go after you've you've got your sea legs, my boy. You can't just walk in there unless you know what you're doing. It, the, a lot of the enemies in there are pretty tough. I think this guy makes a very, very good point here where it, he says that it's more filled in in the Hollowed Marsh. I agree. I feel like it's not just open nothing. I think the Hollowed Marsh is definitely one of the better zones within the game because it's so it's so filled with a bunch of trees. There's a lot of mobs. There's a lot going on. Hollowed Marsh, I love that place. It's it's really good. There's so many bandits, so many tuanosaurs. Just there's a lot going on in, in, in that marsh, and it's super good. As much as I want to say go there un until you have some good gear, I, I wouldn't go there. It, it's rough. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the progression, was just a lot to take in. Me and my buddy got our cheeks clapped by a dinosaur with, with lights on it. Dinosaur with lights on it? What do you mean? What the hell is that? We are doing a blind playthrough, so I don't know the name. Just really feels like an adventure. Agreed. That's what it's about, dude. It's about the adventure. It's about getting cheeks clapped and figuring out how you can't let that happen again. It, it, it's top tier it's that's why outward is great okay i think we've gone over a, a few things here that was it was really good uh, honestly th this one is really wholesome i really like it this guy's enjoying it he's having a good adventure having a good time got his cheeks clapped you know we all know what that's like <laughs> anyway that's it for today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed it i'll talk to you guys later don't forget friday we're having a, a bit of a discussion we're going to be adding a new game to the roster every friday so be ready for that it may be out of left field for some people but it'll only be on fridays so be aware we still might do some random content on friday but for now we're going to stick with this one game so be prepared for that but that is it i'll talk to you guys later Bye bye